It's good to be with you on this Monday morning. My name is Tom. Thank you for spending a few minutes with me today. It's a new week. It's a new day. It's an opportunity to look afresh at the Word of God. Psalm 85 is our text today, and Psalm 85 is this week's call to worship here at Grace Point Church here in Napanee. This is God's Word. For the director of music of the Sons of Korah, a psalm. You showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, O God, our Savior, and put away your displeasure toward us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to folly. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. The writer of this psalm is remembering the goodness of God throughout the generations, and he's looking forward again to God pouring out blessing upon his, upon his people and restoring them to the land and restoring them to the promised land, the land that God has promised them, and restoring them to peace and restoring them to safety. Um, that's the promise that, that the psalmist is trusting in. They knew God and they knew God's salvation and they knew of the promise of that salvation. So people in the Old Testament, we ask the question sometimes, how were they saved? And sometimes we, we hear the answer that says, well, of course, they were saved by their works. They were saved by, by their adherence to the law, and that's not correct. They were saved, rather, by the same thing we were saved by, the cross. The cross is the only thing that saves. When we're saved by the cross, we, we're looking back at the cross as a, as a uh, completed action. It's a finished work. When the people of the Old Testament were saved by the cross, they were looking forward to the promise. They were looking forward to the promise of the Messiah. They were looking forward to the promise of deliverance. They were looking forward to the promise of true salvation because the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. So everybody knew that the ceremonial system of sacrifices was only symbolic, that it pointed forward to some real sacrifice. It pointed forward to something else, something more, something something real. And so when we read now the, the Old Testament, we read the Psalms, we see now something that the Old Testament readers and writers could not see. We see the fulfillment. The fulfillment of the Psalms comes in the Lord Jesus Christ. The text reminds us here that righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. So the scriptures, the Old Testament, all pointed forward to this message of hope and of salvation and deliverance and redemption, a message which was fulfilled by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we trust in Christ and we know that Christ is a savior because the Old Testament foretold of Christ's coming and they foretold of the deliverance that he would bring. God is a loving and compassionate God. He has demonstrated and he has declared his love and his compassion throughout history and he has fulfilled that promise and he's fulfilled it for you and for me and for everyone who places their faith and their trust in Christ for salvation.